Tonight, the NSA goes transparent, sort of. Fox goes after Dish. And what can be done to diversify the tech workplace? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 118 for Friday, June 27th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, the New York Times reports that Facebook has disbanded the team of engineers originally assigned to work on Facebook Home, which was Facebook's custom software for Android devices, according to two anonymous sources familiar with the matter. Last year, when it was introduced, Home was the company's hope to integrate deeper Facebook features into an Android phone, making it faster to view photos, send messages to friends without needing to open the Facebook app. But the response was uh, lukewarm, to say the least, and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said in an interview uh, interview last year, quote, I definitely think Home is slower in rolling out than I would have hoped, end quote. The Facebook Home software, which is still available for download in the Google Play app marketplace, has not been updated since January. The National Security Agency has posted its first full transparency report to the official agency Tumblr, no less. The report breaks out the total number of orders for 2013, broken out into 1,767 FISA orders, 38,812 targets of national security letters, and 423 targets of FISA business records requests. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence says the report part of a, is part of a commitment to more transparency within the agency, and the numbers seem consistent with the numbers offered by President Obama in previous speeches. However, The Verge notes that the word target can be misleading since the report defines a target as, quote, an individual person, a group, or an organization composed of multiple individuals or a foreign power that possesses or is likely to communicate foreign intelligence information, end quote. Google, Microsoft, and other companies have released similar, similar reports, but couldn't provide as much context in accordance with a previous agreement with the Department of Justice. Now that the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against the legality of streaming TV service Aereo's business model, Fox wants to use the ruling to go after DISH, the U.S.'s third largest pay TV service for allowing live TV programming streams over the Internet to its subscribers who can then sideload the content to computers and mobile devices. Fox's legal team submitted the Supreme Court's Aereo decision as ammunition in its case against DISH, which is scheduled to begin oral arguments before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals on, Jan on, sorry, on July 7th in Pasadena, California, Fox takes issue with Dish's feature called Hopper. It's a service that allows customers to record all of a primetime broadcaster's schedule and auto-hop, which allows them to skip all of the broadcaster's ads. The Ninth Circuit denied Fox's attempts to close down Hopper in 2013 and refused to rehear the case in January this year. Apple has announced it will stop development on its photo editing app Aperture later this year with the release of OS X or OS X Yosemite and transition users to Photos, a new app that was introduced during Apple's WWDC keynote. iPhoto will be replaced by the Photos app as well. The company says it will provide compatibility updates to Aperture that will allow it to run on OS X Yosemite, but will not continue to update it. However, Apple will provide update paths that help users transition from Aperture and iPhoto to Photos for OS X. For those who don't like those options, Adobe has announced it will double down on Lightroom support and offer Apple users a way to migrate over to Adobe's Pro Photography program. Aperture might be winding down, but Apple is still committed to Final Cut Pro 10 or X, however you want to say it there, motion, compressor, and main stage apps and has released updates for all four. Apple also announced that Scripps will deploy Final Cut Pro X workflows across all of its TV stations across the US with claims that Final Cut Pro X beat Premiere Pro in speed, flexibility, and ease of use. Now coming up, what you say to a police officer if they want to search your smartphone. And next I'll chat with Selena Larson from ReadWrite about what's being done to get more women and minorities in the tech space. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. 
Want to be more efficient with your software tools? Learn a five-step process for getting things done. Create an effective resume. Lynda.com offers thousands of online video courses in software, creative, and business skills across a wide variety of subjects. With a Lynda.com subscription, members receive unlimited access to the entire course library. Lynda.com works with software companies to provide you updated training, often the same day new versions hit the market, so you'll always have the very latest skills. Learn from top experts, and all of the courses are produced at the highest quality, not like the homemade videos you'll find on YouTube. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms. It's only $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. And you can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Visit lynda.com slash TN2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,400 courses free for seven days. That's lynda.com slash TN2. All right, I'm super excited to welcome to the show Selena Larson, a staff writer at Read Write. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, you wrote an article about the lack of diversity being a problem with tech companies. Mm -hmm. uh, you took the diversity reports released by several companies and did a great synopsis there. And it's no big shock there aren't enough women or minorities in tech. Basically, we're all a bunch of white dudes. Uh, <laughs> but all kidding aside, generally, what is the balance of men and women uh, with technology employers right now? So yeah, so Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, and Yahoo all released their data. Um, Google, of course, did it first, and Facebook is the most recent. They released it yesterday. And for the most part, uh, for all these companies, they are male-dominated between 60 and 70%. And then uh, in the United States, uh, they're majority white male. So uh, 50 to 60% of the workforce is, is white. Um, and so in most of these companies, blacks and Hispanics make up a percentage of 2 to 3% each, and um, Asians uh, somewhere of 30 percent uh, range as well so um, what we can tell from all of them is they are very white male yeah yeah um, now you obviously you looked at some of the big companies Facebook Yahoo Google LinkedIn uh, would we see the same thing in smaller tech companies is it better or worse there would you say so smaller startups have yet to release their data or at least really make a, a big point to. Um, it's kind of these these larger tech companies are really leading the charge. However, um, we anecdotally, we hear stories all the time about how uh, the programmer culture, it's very young, white, male dominated, tends to push out minorities or people who are different. In fact, in the last few weeks, we've seen um, a lot of uh, this in the news, for instance, GitHub, uh, one of their most prominent female developers quit, and she's publicly criticized the company culture for not being a good place for women in tech to work. Um, to GitHub's credit, of course, they've said that they're doing a lot to, um, to really make it a welcoming work environment. However, if you even take a look at um, startup or tech conferences where a lot of startups and representatives, they're also very male dominated. Yeah. I mean, speaking of tech conferences, I was at Google IO this week and I would say just anecdotally, I would, I would definitely say that I noticed a little bit of an improvement as far as the number of women that you saw roaming the halls at IO versus last year. You said in your, in your article that women accounted for 20% of attendees, that that's up from 7% mm -hmm. last year. Um, mm -hmm. How does Google or really any tech company attempt to improve that balance actively in this case? So all these tech companies that have been re re releasing their data are saying that they're committed to improving this imbalance. Sure. For instance, they're partnering with different organizations that increase women and minorities' opportunities in the workforce, like the Anita Borg Institute, as well as Girls Who Code. Um, and also they're working with different educational organizations, just K-12 education all the way to university and even post-university, like career switching organizations or code schools um, to really help women get more jobs in tech. Google, for instance, just committed $50 million to a project called Made with Code to encourage young girls to learn code. But at the same time, they also launched um, in March uh, 40 Forward, which pledges $1 million to 40 different startup communities who have promised to increase women in their work for, in their community by 25%. So really it's on both ends, um, educating, getting more girls interested in technology, but also on the flip side, um, giving those opportunities to more women who either want to transition into tech, have an interest in STEM, or even don't feel like the workplace is a great work environment for women or minorities at this point. Sure, sure. Now, who uh, kind of started this, the diversity reporting that we're seeing? Is that Google? And do you think just yeah. the, the, the sheer act of reporting these stats is going to help that balance as well? 
Yeah, so Google really started it, but so far these companies have really jumped on board. I know mm -hmm. LinkedIn, uh, I believe LinkedIn was the first after Google, and then it goes Yahoo, Facebook. And so the dominoes are kind of falling. People are be, are willing to be more transparent. Um, of course, uh, I, I feel like this hopefully will will start a shift. I mean, it, yeah. it really creates a benchmark for these companies to say, look, these are this is our diversity data as of June 2014, and in a year, in two years, they can release more information and say, and the public can say, okay, I can see this effort is really making a difference or, hey, look, you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really what I hope these reports will do. Yeah, it's it's about changing the culture as much as it is about kind of pointing out uh, the, the fact that it exists at all. Um, and then finally, uh, what about ageism? Is that is that a problem as well here? Yeah, so it's not talked about as much, I feel, as yeah. uh, women and minorities in technology. But if you look at even Mark Zuckerberg, he just turned 30 recently. And, you know, there were all those jokes about, oh, he's too old for Facebook now. And, you know, he's not the startup programmer anymore. He's like, he's too old. Um, and they were, I mean, all joking aside, they they did have a point, you know, like people are looking for the next big thing to come out of um, Stanford or Harvard, you know, these young guys that drop out of college to create, you know, the next billion dollar application. And um, there is kind of that, that ageism. And look, I just said guys, you know, <laughs> I didn't even say women who drop out of college, but these mm -hmm. young guys who drop out of college um, and wear hoodies to give money to venture capital. And, um, and so that's, that's a problem as well. Sure. I think maybe hoodies needs to be worked into this thing too. Like <laughs> white dudes wearing hoodies. It, it, all, it all plays into that. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Selena. Um, great story and uh, great work there. Where, where can viewers connect with all of your work online? Yeah, definitely. So, of course, uh, readwrite.com. But uh, I'm pretty responsive on Twitter. So if anyone feels like chatting, uh, I'm just at Selena Larson, as you see it spelled on your screen. Perfect. Easy enough. All right. Thanks again, Selena. We'll have you back soon. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. You all too. Right. All right, and finally, on Wednesday, we told you about the Supreme Court's decision to make law enforcement officers obtain a warrant before searching your phone because without one, the search is a violation of the U.S. Constitution's Fourth Amendment. And today, The Daily Dot has a helpful write-up reminding citizens what actions they can take to ensure their rights aren't violated. For example, keeping your phone locked with a passcode at all times. Jay Stanley, senior policy analyst for the American Civil Liberties Union, also suggests you calmly and respectfully tell the officer that his search is in violation of the Constitution. That's his quote. And make sure you are clear that you don't consent to the search. However, under the new ruling, police still have the right to search your phone without a warrant in a few certain scenarios known as exigent uh, circumstances. For example, the abduction of a child or if police suspect a person is in imminent harm. Both the ACLU and the Electronic Frontier Foundation have created Know Your Rights pages that explain what citizens can and cannot legally do when confronted by law enforcement. Because knowing as they say, is half the battle. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our no morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.